I would constantly be looking for something to put in my system. I never wanted to be sober. I was saved and baptized um, when I was six. I was raised in a Christian home. I went to a Christian school. I went to a great church all my life. I wasn't truly giving that, giving Jesus the rest of my life, and I should have. After high school, I kind of just went through the went through the gig. I had plans to go into the United States Navy, and I uh, I did. I enlisted. I went into the Navy. I had great. I had a great job. I was beginning training for a great job in the Navy, and pretty much a guarantee of a great job afterwards as well. Uh, being on base, I got really lonely, got extremely depressed. I had friends, you know, I could call family. It wasn't a matter of lack of people, it was rather a lack of my relationship suffering with God. And so as soon as the influence of Satan crept in, it just went downhill from there. I turned to alcohol, turned to drugs. Believe it or not, there's plenty of that in the military. Because of that, and because of many bad decisions, I eventually got, got kicked out of the Navy. So the last days in the Navy were some of the worst of my life. As I said, I was depressed, I was lonely. I would constantly be looking for something to put in my system. I never wanted to be sober. I uh, never wanted to be thinking clearly, pretty much. I always wanted to have something, and we would I, would, I would find any way to do it, whether it was drugs, alcohol. I got back home, and I thought that I was happy. I thought that it would help. I thought that the loneliness would leave. I was back with family. I was back with a couple of friends that I had, and I thought that everything would be better. I was wrong, and the, uh, the depression set in again. I was still lonely. I still turned to drugs. I turned to harder drugs than the, than the Navy. I turned to worse things. So things got worse before they got better. They got really bad. They, uh, I had many terrible encounters with, with drugs, people. During one extremely miserable encounter with, uh, with drugs, I was laying in my room after the weekend got done, and I was just laying in my room recovering, and it, I felt miserable. It was pretty much the end of the line. So I kind of uh, put away the harder drugs after that. I knew that I shouldn't have any part of them. I knew that I should not be involved in things like that, be involved with people like that. I soon turned to marijuana. It was, it was much chiller. It allowed me to not be sober, but at the same time I wasn't influenced with all these just dark thoughts. And the Lord led a much needed friend into my life who currently at the same time was living in sin as well. He went to a local church. He invited me, he soon invited me to church. When I heard church, I just, I got a good feeling. I was just kind of like, man, that's, you know, it's been a while. I would love to go to church. And I came uh, to Hungry Generation, and it was, from the first service, it was great. The worship was powerful. The preaching was powerful. The people were powerful. And, uh, you know, you can tell that the presence of God is in this church. And pastor said something that really just touched my heart. He said, God cannot bless what's not in his hands. And so from that moment on, I just kind of, the whole thing with the marijuana, the whole thing with how the rest of my life was going, I just kind of said, you know, God, you have my life. I place my addictions in your hands. I place my future in your hands. Your will be done. Ever since giving my life to Christ, ever since just kind of rededicating, making a clear image of where the rest of my life is going, it's things has changed. I. I don't smoke marijuana, I'm, I don't smoke cigarettes, I've quit drinking, it's just, it's, it's so much better living, living sober. And I thank God for what He's done in my life. I thank Him that His timing was perfect. My name's Taylor Finch, and this is my testimony.